I guess you were not expecting this face to be greeting you with a brand new video. Uh, well, the thing is, don't get your hopes up, I'm not back by any means. Uh, actually, I have no visibility at this point when, when I'm going to restart the channel, but in the meantime, uh, guess what I was doing? I was listening to music, I was discovering so many, like, it's literally at this point, it's countless new channels, like brand new channels, with young, fresh new artists, uh, like especially female artists, uh, so many of them so good, uh, and they just sing their asses off, and everything is, you know, just like YouTube exploded, like I have so much catch up to do uh, for the past couple of years where, where I basically had a hard stop from, uh, from anything on social media, but let me get back to the point of this video right here. So, um, ever since I was a kid, uh, I had this big pet peeve of mine, which was whenever I would hear people sing a song, or many songs for that matter, uh, whenever I hear people sing songs in English that they're meant to be in English and they have English lyrics and the original artists played it in English and obviously they're trying to do covers now so they they're playing it again in English uh, it's a very hard thing for me to listen to someone who has a fantastic voice in terms of the melodic stru structure of, of the song basically like in in English <laughs> uh, that means they can play uh, very well, they have very high range, high pitch voices, no problem with that, perfect pitch. However, their accent is, let's call it subpar. Some people just have uh, very few uh, drops here and there. Some people have kind of like a constant, mm, whatever uh, accent, whereas some people, uh, you can hear that they, they, they struggle with English and to be to be honest, to be fair, I'm not going to address the people who have a very poor English by default, who have um, no mastery over the language, because you can hear those people. They even butcher a lot of the words because they don't know what it means or whatever. You know, they they just kind of mumble they, their way through it, but. As soon as you have a certain level of competency within the language and you know what you're singing, uh, I find it very hard for me, and I think it, this also applies to you, I find it very hard to understand the fact that I'm listening to a musician who's an artist who has this very fine-tuned ear on the things that the common folks don't perceive so they're able to pick up all of these fine modulations and you know uh, all of these uh, different traits of of the way in which the voice forms and there's the whole school of like uh, vocal coaching and whether it's uh, you know for music or like um, you know voice uh, coaching for other type, types of things even for acting and, and stuff like that so you're talking about people who have a very good grasp on all of the fine intricacies of the melodic structure of both songs as well as uh, speech itself so the thing is that accent no matter if it's uh, English or any other language accent itself does not belong so much within the category of um, you know obviously not in the lexicon but also not in the like grammatical way or or like it, it doesn't fall within um, within the pattern of uh, phonetics let's put it this way it's not necessarily um, something that's language related although hey you're talking about accents of a language so it is no 
actually accents are basically the melodic structure of the the sentences the words the the speech that pours out of your mouth right so you have the the way i, I always think about it is you have like these big waves which are kind of like the melodic structure the melody line itself but on top of this you superimpose like the the, the small fine-tuned details of the speech so that's the melody of the language but make no mistake it's again melody it's not just a metaphor it's again melody right so again just to preface this english ain't my uh native tongue my my uh mother tongue as you can probably hear and i i have no problem with people when they speak to certain extents but um i mean if 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 they're putting in the effort i have no problem i just start having a problem when people are very lazy but when you start singing that's a whole different ball game because when you're singing what your brain is actually doing is it's trying to imitate imitate what everything uh it's all in one package you cannot separate the highs and lows of the notes that you're trying to play from the whatever subtle things uh you must reproduce with, within the speech pattern of the lyrics right so uh when i hear people you know they they, they play covers and then they go like yeah but uh, you know he or she they have like a great voice but yeah the english is what whatever but it's excusable because this and that no it ain't uh this is again this is not a problem of language uh accent does not belong to linguistics per se it belongs to music it's the fine art of the musicality of of speech and um basically whenever you're trying to sing something without you realizing it you're trying to impersonate whether it's the original artist or like even even yourself or or other people other musical influences within your subconscious you're always trying to imitate and impersonate no matter how original you want to be and i would beg for people to stop playing the uh originality card whether it's for for them not being able to to sing properly or for not being able to play an instrument properly like if you can play a solo the way it's been written it's not that you want to put your own uh flair or your own flavor or color to it and spice things up because you're actually dumbing things down because you're playing a washed down version of the original and yeah so i'm i'm i'm, I'm done with uh with those stupid excuses uh, just say the way it is you can't play the original it's too hard so you're playing your own version which is doable and decent that's something i could uh play along with but uh enough with the uh weird excuses so the, the back to the to the vocals it's 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 the same thing that applies and again uh the reason why i brought in the whole uh imitation or impersonation is that you probably never thought of this but if you're speaking a different language other than like other than your own uh, native tongue uh, mother tongue um without realizing it you you have to all of a sudden let go not only of your uh of your speech pattern but also you have to let go of the basic core mechanics of your language and all of a sudden start employing different sounds uh that your mouth and you know throat and you know tongue and teeth and lips might not be accustomed to doing because you might not find those things within the structure of your own language and not only that but you also have to unless you want to sound like a when you speak you speak like this and it, it is very okay you know uh, no it is not okay uh if you want to basically just and by no means uh, do i think i have uh, a great accent it's just that you know whatever i'm 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 at least not that lazy although so many parentheses that i want to open here so 
Uh, again, when speaking, it's not that much of a problem. Even now when I'm speaking, so first of all, I'm not putting in that much effort, which is why it sounds kind of like, mm, uh, not too good, not too bad. Um, if I were to record something professionally or what, or sing, if I, I would, I wish to think I, I can still sing, although that's, uh, that's something probably not true anymore. But anyhow, or if it's like professional uh, voice acting or whatever, it, I completely change uh, the way in which this thing operates. But like casual speaking, yeah, I'm, I'm also a little bit guilty of uh, being, let's say, uh, lazy enough uh, not to put out the perfect version of it, but also not that lazy as to uh, just to speak like this, how you, I have uh, in my language, and I hope you guys uh, will uh, understand. No. Uh, so uh, that's something that basically bothers me. Because, again, uh, you have to let go not only of the structures of the, the way in which sounds are formed within your own language, but also you need to let go of a lot of your culture which is something a lot of people are not fond of, but you need to understand, like if you're coming from a different uh, culture, like a vastly different culture, you'll see that even though you have the ability or theoretically you have the ability to mold your, your tongue onto the right sounds, when you have to make up sentences and actually speak to people, you'll see that you have a very unusual way of speaking. And the way in which you construct your sentences, not just grammar-wise, but like um, some of the cultural things that stand behind those sentences uh, don't come across very well uh, in English and vice versa. So you might speak within a very strange uh frame, let's put it this way, which will be immediately obvious to uh, to the native speakers. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of jokes, a lot of subtle cultural references that you need to let go of. And not, on, not only that, but your identity, like uh, this is not to sound as a snob, but uh, or, or like, uh, uh, you know, against being a patriot or nationalist, whatever, because people get offended by so many things these days. But really, you need to no longer consider yourself like at least surface level. You, you, you have to no longer consider yourself to be a whatever fill in the blanks you might be in terms of nationality. You, if it's English in this case that you're trying to, to employ, uh, you kind of need to in your mind, fool yourself, hoping to also, um, you know, translate this into fooling the listener's ears. You need to fool yourself just for, for the time being that you're actually the Brit, the English person, the American person, the Canadian, the Irish, whatever, whatever accent it is that you're mostly comfortable with. You need to sort of um, yeah, you need to bathe yourself within that mental structure of being that thing. So in other words, I know this will sound ridiculous, but despite the fact that I'm obviously not American or I'm, as many of you know, I'm Romanian, right? So, um, despite the fact that I'm Romanian, like always when I speak, uh, when I speak to people, uh, when I talk in English, in the back of my mind, there's this weird switch that flips. And even if I speak to like someone who's, I don't know, French or German or Russian or Chinese or African, it doesn't matter. If I'm speaking to foreigners, um, sometimes I, I see myself from a distance, kind of like, you know, mentally, and I'm like, you twat, you actually think you're, I mean, the way you're speaking, it's like you have this thing about you where, where you actually believe you're American. It, it, it's a very snobbish thing to, to have within your, your, your 
the back of your mind, especially when you, when you're not that national that nationality, right? So uh, it's I, I mean it's bad enough to to be overly uh, nationalistic and and like go on on the the heavy side of being too too uh, infused with your own culture, but like when you're not even from that culture, but somehow in your mind you're pretending to be uh, just for the sake of uh, better communicating with people within the same cultural frame. That's kind of like a weird mental exercise for people to do. But coming back to the music, uh, it's so hard and it's very hard for me to justify people who don't find the proper time or care into putting uh, the effort to correct their accents because at the end of the day again you're an artist you're an artist who uh, pretends to understand the fine intricacies of uh, of language and music and sound in general so I can't pass the excuse to musicians that oh you know they have a great voice but their English sucks unless their English is very very poor if you have decent vocabulary decent uh, like decent understanding you can watch movies without uh, subtitles you hear a song and you understand the lyrics uh, that's good enough now you just need to, to work on the other uh, part of the song that you don't really want to pay attention to which is the language part the accent part which again is not language it's basic so it's not linguistics it's uh, it's it's music it's just music is the music of the words not of the um, melody line right so uh, yeah and, and, and it's not just about having a bad accent but also a lot of people I think when they learn the lyrics for the first time uh, to a song or they, they they learn some of them because they have gaps and stuff like that because I've seen this even with native uh, speakers like Mm, the original song has all of these fine transitions between words and stuff like this but then when they sing their own version of it like all of that thing is gone it's like they're reading the lyrics for the first time like uh you know you got some smooth transit you know smooth transitions and stuff like that and now they speak they have some smooth transitions like that it's, it's like the, you, you can hear the hard stop between things. I mean, that's the thing when you're when you're playing covers and I don't care about hearing how you, you want to make it your own. Okay, great excuse for not being able to. Uh, but um, when you're playing something, I mean, sure, you have some certain freedoms, which again, it's about you as an artist. Can you spot the things with which you can play? And can you spot the things with which you cannot play? Because um, when you're covering, uh, you know, cultural staples, like uh, w when you're covering things that are etched into people's brains, you better be able to deliver deliver that thing very close, if not perfect, but very close to, to, to that. So like for, for me, when I hear... Uh, people covering, you know, uh, Michael Jackson or Freddie Mercury or Bon Jovi or Skid Row or Journey or, or uh, you know, Guns N' Roses or, or, or Roxette or, or Vixen or uh, you name it, like Phil Collins or any of the huge, huge, huge um, uh, list names uh, and, and the list can go on and on. It, it's very unforgiving to hear uh, them just completely butcher a passage either because of like having a subpar uh, not so decent accent or even again with native speakers who do have the proper accent or the ability to have that accent but they completely reshuffle the, the like the transitions and they, they completely discard and ignore like all of those smooth uh, and fine nuances like that's something to me that's uh that just takes away from the whole thing and just uh shows me you're you're basically just 
you're very careless and you're not really a professional uh, and I'm not speaking here about your ability because your abilities might be through the roof or your potential might be there but you just don't care you're basically probably just playing covers for like weddings and uh, parties and stuff like that where basically you're I mean countless times have I heard cover bands especially when I go on vacation and we, we, we sit down at some restaurant and whatever. There's like a, the local band that, that just plays. And I can hear the fact that they're on one hand doing great. They're doing tons more than I ever did in music, right? Uh, that's actually one of my low-key dreams to at least if... Because apparently I, I, I won't be making anything... Uh, out of myself within the music industry but but at least like to have a period of my life where I at least managed to play in a bar or like uh, at a terrace or somewhere right um, so back to those those uh, live gigs like I hear them uh, do so well yet it's like they rarely if hardly they they, they never even bother to to change their their voice like they're i mean they're they're playing things from like the, um, the 90s the 80s the 2000s the like present time the 70s um girl voices uh, boys voices man voices um uh women men whatever uh all like all the way from like tina turner to like uh rock set to to like Michael Jackson to and, and so on and so forth and they are using their same basic neutral voice I'm like come on dude just put in some effort like just try to imitate uh, things a little bit better right I mean we have so many uh, great examples like uh, ABBA uh, Roxette um, right Roxette uh, Swedish uh, Swedish uh, so, so they're uh, they're Swedes, right? Uh, Swedish uh, people. Uh, what else? Uh, oh, uh, modern talking, right? So modern talking, uh, rock set. Despite the fact that they might be, you know, German or Swedish or uh, you name it, uh, those people just listening to them, those people give you a master class in not being native uh, native speakers of uh, of English yet delivering a stellar performance and to be honest i mean when i grew up when i was growing up i never knew that uh you know marie from rock set or uh thomas from um, modern talking uh they're not i don't know either americans or or uh, english or whatever uh something of that sort that um so i never knew i i thought that was their native uh tongue they they just sounded that good again when people speak it's a different thing they they they, they sound great but they don't have to sound a hundred percent on par i don't like i said probably a lot of you don't it's it's not a problem the the, the thing is putting in the effort and being able to deliver it if you want to because like in my case, I became so lazy, like my accent is really um, crumbling down uh, as the years go by just because I, I lack the interaction with uh, native speakers. And if I do interact with foreigners who they themselves aren't native speakers, that just completely fucks with my brain. And uh, yeah, there's this different part of my, my brain that uh, basically tends to adapt itself and the way I speak based on the other party or parties that are involved so yeah but again look at so many great uh, singers Germans uh, Swedes uh, or whatever because there are tons more examples you can't really spot a thing right so it's not about being like the snob for the perfect delivery, but it's again, it's um, it's just trying. Uh, like uh, you know, people think that the Germans uh, should speak like this. Yeah, uh, again, just 
listen to to the way uh, Thomas Anders uh, sings. Not even close, right? So, uh, yeah, all of those stereotypes, uh, they have to go, right? Uh, French people, again, when they, when they sing, it's perfect. So, ob obviously, they're, they're like, you know, Celine Dion. Uh, yeah, Canadian, French, English, whatever. Uh, when she speaks, it's a different thing. But when she's, she's uh, singing, pff, I never knew when I was growing up that, uh, uh, you know, she doesn't have the typical American accent uh, that I otherwise hear within her songs, right? Um, and... Yeah, again, just think of voice acting. That's that's basically what it is. It's you, you have to do voice acting when singing, while singing. Uh, Latin-based languages like uh, you know Romanian, Italian, Spanish, Portuguese, French, uh, they have their own particularities. Uh, so the so do uh, you know Russian-based languages. So do uh, you know uh, Germanic. Uh, anglo saxonic languages have their own particularities uh, Asian languages have their own and so on and so forth some of them need a little bit more work uh, because they're further away from the way English sounds and even when you say Eng English like what do you mean like American uh, or uh, like uh, Cockney or, or you know Scottish or Irish or like even Scottish, Irish, uh, you know, British in general or American in general, what time period? It doesn't matter, in my opinion, as long as you're somewhere there. But again, it's just a shame, back, going back to the point and ending with this video, it's just a shame for me to hear all of these talented people, um, especially young people with an incredible potential to mold their brains around the the whole process of learning, right? Um, they can adapt very easily. Such a shame to to basically hear what what incredible voice they have, and not just the voice, but it's the inner ear and and, and the whole musical brain uh, attributes uh, that they have, and they're already working because they they manage to replicate the melodic structure so well. Sometimes you know you hear these covers and they're like even better than the original. Sometimes sometimes you always prefer the original, uh, despite something being super super amazing. But seeing that they have this, but not really using it at, using it at all for 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 the for the whole speech part just kind of like a shame it's, it's it's really a shame dude so just uh put in some effort try to replicate that as well because it's part of, of music so it's kind of like uh you know if you're a guitarist or like a pianist or any playing any sort of instrument it's it's kind of like just fo focusing on the notes but not having those smooth subtle nuances like the vibrato or the soft touch or the slides the bends or you know the sustain pedal and stuff like that i mean it, it just takes away from the whole artistic expression from the whole vibe and atmosphere so again i don't care if he, your voice has you know two octaves three octaves four octaves a gazillion octaves uh, at the end of the day you have to deliver a package and if that package is remarkable in some ways uh, but rough around the edges and not polished in some of those Remember that you're always as good as your weakest, um, not link in this case, but uh, attribute or product, byproduct, or call it whatever, deliverable, right? So, yeah, uh, just let me know what you guys think about this, uh, this whole thing. Uh, down in the comment section below. Are you bothered by this at all? Do you care? Do you not care? Are you bothered by people like myself who nitpick all of these things and you'd wish that uh, people wouldn't be so, you know, pedantic uh, about these things? Uh, yeah, it's probably the first time I ever used that word. Probably a part of me was looking for the right opportunity. I have no idea. Uh, yeah, because again, with 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 like the same 
same voice, just different accents. You can sound so different, right? I mean, you just have like a... I remember I was watching The Joker uh, throughout the years. Uh, you know, like for, for me, like early... So late 19, early 20th century US. Uh, it's kind of like a weird zone where where the accents sound like a very weird hybrid between what we now perceive as American and what used to be old English or a list, uh, like at least British uh, accents. Like people from the 1910s, 20s, 30s um, had a very weird way of delivering the sentences, right? Uh, even when I, when I watch old black and white interviews, it's like they all have this way of speaking and you're not very sure whether or not they're gonna say something that's typical to the American public or the, you know, it's, 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 it's this weird thing. So, you know, sometimes I watch cartoons and I see different variations throughout the decades. So, you know, with, uh, with like the Joker, you know, Mark Hamill and all of the other flavors of uh, wannabe Mark Hamill's, you know, you, you just start to speak like this and you try to see what comes out of it. But the same voice, like without the proper accent and just replacing the accent with, with, a, with another one, with a different one, it's, uh, you know, it's uh, very different to, to do, right? It's uh, maybe so, maybe not good. Right, so it's completely the same voice, yet completely different characters, right? So, yeah, same with Batman. I mean, you take that deep voice, which, I mean, I can't really do. Even for the Joker, I can't really do. I haven't done voices in years, but, you know, you, you, you take someone like uh, Kevin Conroy's, um, you know, version of it, and you have, like, Alfred. I'll give you the location of the Batmobile, whatever. <clears throat> right now, my voice is, is, is shut after doing the... the the Joker for like five seconds, but like Alfred, you know, uh, yes, sir. It's, 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 it's again, like the, the same depth. It's just, you're replacing accents and you're re all of a sudden replacing the, uh, the culture. And now my voice is really fucked up. Yeah. I, I do a much better version of, uh, of Batman if it's not preceded by, by the Joker, which completely burns my, my throat. But anyhow, you, you get the idea, right? So let me know what you think in the comment section down below. It's 32 minutes, almost like I'm trying to compensate for the lack of uh, presence. Uh, please excuse me. Let me know what you think. And maybe I'll have like a follow-up or a series of follow-ups to this weird um, installment of mine, which was totally unscripted and un, um, yeah, totally not in the plan. And just to end it on a very weird note, let's let's do some weird lighting around here. Yeah. Let me know what you guys think. See ya. I'm out. Bye.